Hey kids, don't forget to check out Molly Morris at M3 Virtual Accounting if you have a virtual business that you need help with. I hired Molly Morris about two years ago and she has been a godsend in terms of making sure that I am ship shape all year long so that when tax time comes, I don't have to panic, I don't have to scramble, I don't have to sit at my computer for hours straight searching for files. It's all taken care of and it is so much better on this side of things. So go and check her out. Find out if you can get a free consultation from her to see if she can help you and tell her that you heard about her from me. M3virtualaccounting.com This is an Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Some Spoiled, the song of ice and fire to the co-host Switcheroony. Covering A Feast for Crows, chapters 14 and 15, Brienne and Samwell. Also featuring guest host Sam Wise, who is in the room and having a treat. <laughs> in these chapters, Rashawn has got some very strong feelings that she hinted at but did not disclose before the recording, and I'm pretty interested to see what they are. <laughs> Welcome to Unspoiled. Monsters are dangerous, and just now, kings are dying like flies. I am the king! Fuck the king. Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. All right, lady. Lay it on me. What were you going to, uh, this, what were you going to mention? This- so, like, I recalled John and Jenny, right, having a conversation mm-hmm. back at the wall. Yep. But we did not get everything that was happening, did we? Definitely not, no. Because this reveal of what mm-hmm. has happened, because the whole time, I'm like, what is going on with Jenny? Mm-hmm. What? I mean, Gilly. I'm sorry, guys. You're I'm Gilly. So sorry. Yeah, I'm, I was supposed to say. <laughs> yeah. I got J-I-N-N-Y in my head from an, another whole other thing. But uh, I'm like, what the fuck is going on with her? Like, what is happening? What is happening? And I'm racking my brain and I'm just like, I, I just was like, okay, I have forgotten something really important because, you know, guys, that is a thing that I do sometimes and my deepest apologies for that. So the whole time, I'm just like, what did I forget? What did I forget? And then... And fucking then, <laughs> da, da, da. and I could, I, I fucking, I, I, I don't even know, like, really, Lord Commander Jon Snow, really, like, really, and I don't mm. know, like, I know we talked about how much of this played out on the show and like the details of it and how the show changed things around and everything, da 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 da. But, like, there was absolutely none of this in the show. I am not crazy, no. right? I am not a crazy person. There was not any of this whatsoever. I and, don't remember any of it at all, no. <laughs> and I, I I can't imagine, like, I'm sure they cut the storyline for, all, like, all kinds of reasons that did make no sense to anybody. But I can't, like, this is the most villainous thing I think I ever heard of Jon Snow doing. Like and, and and you know what and 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 I say villainous because I'm I'm reacting in real time having just read this 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 morning. I am sure there have been pages and pages and pages written across the interwebs justifying this decision and why John had to make it and how it's it's evidence that he's a true leader because he's has the capability to make the hard choices and you know all I'm sure that has all been done to death right but I cannot I cannot like if if he really like it, like at first it's like oh well he did it to save um what's her name Dalla yeah right save her baby but you're say trying to save her baby from Alessandra, so you're gonna just sacrifice Gilly's son? Like that's so that's 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 cool. That's what we're doing here. 
That's what's hot on the streets. I mean, that's like, the question. Is like, <laughs> would Melisandre believe him if he were like, well, this isn't the king's uh, blood son that you want, so you can't sacrifice him? Would she just be like, I'm calling your bluff and sacrificing him anyway? Or See, would she believe him and be like, I guess I won't then? I, that's the thing, right? Like, if you sent... If it was just about sending Dahlia's baby away to protect him, then why are we doing a fucking secret swap then, sir? You know, why not just send both the babies away? Why not just have Gilly take the son, you know, to save him and everybody at the Night's Watch know, okay, that kid's gone. There's no if, and, I think just about because it, right? it's, it's not like he doesn't think that they would have let her leave with the baby. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that's the thinking behind well, it. Well, but like, that's the we can't that's the let thing, them though. know until it's too late. So, like, yeah, you could just like try to smuggle the kid out or something. You know, I don't fucking know, guys. I don't know. I don't have all the answers. I know this is bullshit, though. I know that. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it one bit. <laughs> I don't. And I just, um, yeah, I don't know. I just was, I don't know. I was just really upset by this revelation in a way that surprised me. Um, and it just makes me, I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh. Am I being too harsh on poor, poor, innocent, beleaguered Jon Snow who only ever wants to do the right thing for everybody? Am I being too I'm going to say something and I, like, I'm not trying to influence you too much here, but I think the show did the same thing with Jon as with many other characters wanted him to be likable let him off the hook on some things that mm. were very mm, shades of gray in the mm. books you know and that's not to say that he wasn't intending to do the right thing and whatnot but john is uh you know he's he's never done this commander thing before and sometimes i don't think he makes great calls and he's mm-hmm. doing his best but that's not always what matters mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so i feel like the show wanted him to be way more of a like unvarnished hero mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and uh while i think he has heroic qualities he can be kind of like his judgment i think can be sort of questionable depending on what the topic at hand is right and i think a lot of times even for me reading these books i think well one there's just an influence of the show that i've talked about before and it just is difficult to separate from right mm-hmm. but also so often john wins for lack of a better word whatever you know or triumphs over whatever particular adversity is he's facing in the moment and because right. he keeps being triumphant, we sort of equate that with being good and heroic and, you know, mm-hmm. pure uh, because he wins and, and good, good his is cause supposed must to be win, righteous. right? Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of times his, his more dubious choices get sort of downplayed. Um, even again, as, I'm, I'm indicting myself here as a reader as well, because you're just thinking about the moment that he's found himself in and whether he will prevail. And then mm-hmm. he does. And then you're just like, whew, thank God. And so I don't spend a lot of time being like, hey, but that call was a little dicey, sir. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So this this thing here with, with the baby and, and especially Sam's reaction to it which is really the most heartbreaking thing for me and even with gilly and her heartbreak because we're in a sam's pov and and we know how sam adores and and idolizes john and then also when sam says i am the one that even put him at, because because uh amen says something like you know well it's not john snow it was lord commander john snow right trying to like make this distinction between the the friend of yours that's john your night's wise brother versus the man who is now lord commander who has right. everything on his shoulders and and sam having to digest that this person that he helped put in this position of power then turned around and had to make I don't know if I'm saying had already I'm like trying to equivocate, but Mm -hmm. it makes this decision and Sam is so betrayed and, and, 
and and the anger he feels when he starts thinking about oh so i guess it's fine to sacrifice this little baby because he means nothing you know he's just an abomination just a you know they're trash basically you know doesn't matter he doesn't even deserve to get a name because this baby hasn't been named yet because of the whole like wait till two years old before you name him yeah. it just it just sam sam's feelings of just heartbreak and and betrayal and and it oh and guys. responsibility mm-hmm. like i did this i'm i'm the person who get, put john in a position to have the power to make this call um mm, mm, mm. i'll tell you what y'all <laughs> uh but we'll get to the same old chapter but i i do want to mention and i'll probably say it again when we get there once again in this Samuel chapter george martin has a real gift for describing very very unpleasant traveling situations let me in a way that really puts you right did did i did you feel seasick reading this i was i felt many types of sick (laughs) it wasn't the c exclusively by any means right like he really does put you right there like i felt all the discomfort i felt the like the 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 sort of like the uh what do you call it? Sort of claustrophobic nature of the cabin and how dark mm-hmm. it is and how it smells and there's all this noise because either Gilly's crying or the baby's crying and then the, the boat is the boat is lurching everywhere and Sam is throwing up every five minutes. It was a lot. And George Martin is yep. really, really good at doing these kinds of things. <laughs> Yeah, especially as somebody who's been dealing with a lot more piss and shit in the past uh, few weeks than usual, it was hitting. It was hitting in a way I don't like. So yeah, <laughs> but uh, um, but we start with Brienne's chapter first, and this was sad yes. in a in a, in another kind of way, but 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 sad still. This was sad in a fucking teen movie kind of way. Yeah, it really was um, right. There's yeah, like, you yeah. know, the addition to we also meet uh, Sam's dad, yeah. which is really yeah. an experience. Yeah, he is. Um, I mean, we already disliked him, you know, sure. because of how he treat treats Sam and everything that Sam has told us about him. But now we are meeting him ourselves and also getting uh someone else's opinion of him so it's not just sam now we we got somebody mm-hmm. co-signing at just what a piece of shit this dude is <laughs> how like Indeed. rigid how um you know how uh he cannot cruel. be convinced of anything he you know how cruel he is how um just just fucking awful <laughs> and it's wild because he's like really held in such great esteem throughout the you know, the people that are in charge, at least, especially like the Lannisters, you know. Um, mm-hmm. But this man, this Randall Tarley dude is just a fucking piece of shit. I'm so sorry, Sam. <laughs> like, if you yeah. ever thought that maybe Sam was exaggerating or, you know, maybe say it wasn't fair to judge Tarley based on Sam's, you know, version of events because it's just one version and that never tells the whole complete story of a person. But now we got someone else being like, oh yeah, let me tell you what it was like for me dealing with this guy. And mm-hmm. it, it just validates pretty much everything that Sam has told us about his father, right? Ugh. <laughs> yeah, what I, uh, I always think is like, Sam wound up disappointing his father and so his father treated him so badly because he felt Sam was a disappointment. But I am just as worried about Sam's brother, who is not a disappointment, because this man is such a toxic human being Mm -hmm, that whether mm -hmm. you displease him or please him, (laughs) I don't feel like you're coming out of that well. Doesn't matter. Either way, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what he's He's damaging you somehow. This might not be fair or this might be like, like hella superficial, but he's got like Stannis energy. In some ways. Yes. With uh, more of a. Like. The the cruelty in him. I feel like is stronger than it is. Yes. Agreed. Agreed. But this sort of acting from a place where I am so sure that I'm righteous. You know. Mm -hmm. That I am. That I am on the side of right. And that I know what's right and wrong. And thus I am in a position to judge you. Which I get. 
as yeah. like lords of wherever you are, that like judging people is like part of your your job description, right? We saw Ned had to do the same thing. But there is something about the way that Charlie is described where it doesn't feel like the burden of office. It feels like you're goddamn right I'm the judge because I fucking yeah. know. You know what I mean? Where Ned, it was kind of like, this is just one of the things that comes with your responsibilities, children. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, he, Ned was was judge and juror because he had to be because that was the job. And Charlie feels much more like, oh, yeah, no, no, no. I know. And of course I get to decide. Yeah, you know what I, mean? I would put like, you know, those alignment charts. I would put Stannis at like lawful neutral mm. where he does what needs doing and exactly what needs doing and he never really takes it beyond that and tries not to let his personal feelings get involved and i feel like randall tarley is lawful evil and i I'm, I'm putting an asterisk next to evil because i don't feel like he he is intending evil but i feel like he enacts cruelty under the guise of lawfulness because he really thinks that the violation of an agreed upon rule is in itself like a kind of sin Mm -hmm. that the fact that you even dared to like fly in the face of what society has agreed is the thing Mm -hmm. merits its own punishment because you had the fucking gall kind of energy you and, know what I mean? and that's yeah that's kind of the thing that does remind me of stannis i like your point about mentioning the sort of lack of cruelty because that doesn't seem to be didn't seem to be stannis's kink you know the cruelty mm-hmm. that might be changing in real time as he gets deeper and deeper with melisandre even though the cruelty still isn't the point it's a it's a further end objective that he's working towards but there's something about the again i'm going to use the word sort of rigid and inflexibility that tarly seems to have and move with that does remind me of stan it's a sort of like i can't be i can't be i won't waver you know Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. uh uh, the thing is the thing. The rules are the rules. You know, how dare anybody buck against the the, the way that we all said we were going to behave, you know? Yeah. Um, and if you dare to do so, uh, then I then have a right to judge you because you are not yeah, following Stannis, the rules. Yeah, it's, Stannis, it's, the feeling is like people are going to not follow the rules. And it's my job to be like, oh, well, you chose not to follow the rules. So this is what happens. With Tarly, there it, it's like, I can't believe that you thought you mm. didn't have to follow the rules. Mm. This is a personal offense to mm. me. Right, right, right. I'm right, disgusted right. with you in a very personal way, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. There's something, like, much less removed about it with him. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though he has a coldness to him that you could take as being, like, in, dispassionate, I don't think it is actually Mm. well i think he has his emotions but that doesn't mean he's dispassionate right right like his uh his conversation even though it was very brief with brienne was just filled with um in her conversation in real time and then her flashback to when they were at high garden both of those interactions are very much like well because you chose to not follow the rules of society and insisted on this you know charade of being a knight you have mm-hmm. everything that happened to you you deserved you know it's yep. ultimately your you brought fault. it on you, yourself you know you brought it on yourself if you had just followed the rules you wouldn't be in this situation and so uh with the thing about the reveal about what the other men had done to Brienne and Charlie finally ends up stepping in he steps in because he's is invested in restoring sort of order and also mm-hmm. preventing this escalation of this 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 joke and this game as it gets becomes more and more high stakes. So he's intervening to regain order and control and save his men from doing something that would then dishonor them. He is not right. the least bit interested in protecting Brienne from this, you know, this fucking horrible, horrible joke that they've been playing on her. Mm-hmm. Um and, and and then as it continues to escalate and she becomes possibly in real danger, like physical danger, you know, and he inter- he intercedes, but it, it's not to protect her from any of it. And it's like he resents her for causing all this trouble. 
you know <laughs> that's that's the thing as well is is like and now you're making me have to do a thing and if you just had just not been here i wouldn't have had to deal with any of this mm-hmm. you ruined my vacation yeah like it's a yeah. weird yeah he's yeah he's rough yeah um yeah. but as usual we're getting a little ahead of ourselves here mm-hmm. so uh let's see it starts off with brienne seeing the spot where things happened with the the boat and cleos Frey getting killed and jamie attempting his escape and the fight between the two of them and she is like trying to find the bridge i think um let's see yeah she's trying to find a wall i rode by once that's it not a bridge and she's with pod who is noticing how distracted she is mm-hmm. and pod is having a lot of trouble adjusting to like how to ad- address this is so funny this is, he, he keeps calling her lady sir or or uh, my lady sir or sir my lady like he can't figure out which one to stick with <laughs> so he's just using them both interchangeably every time um yep. pod is adorable we also get some pod backstory in this chapter, which was uh, more, uh, I don't know, it's sadder than I think I thought it was going to be. I don't remember how much we learned about pod when he's first introduced as Tyrion squire. I th- I don't think it was great detail. We I think learned almost nothing. Right. Yeah. I think there may have been one or two throwaway lines about kind of pod being uh from a lesser house and and not really having anywhere else to be so he gets mm-hmm. thrown with Tyrion like he didn't have a lot of other options but we didn't know like the what's and why's of it and we find out here and it is just tr- fucking tragic <laughs> yeah you know he um he's he's born from a like a lower house and his father the first thing his father did after Pod was born was like die in some battle somewhere Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. his mother fucking abandons him to go chase after a singer she got knocked up by and he is i like to think that was lem i don't think it was lem but i just like the idea that it was how funny (laughs) (laughs) is it lem lem and then there's uh what's the other singer we met tom seven strings thomas seven strings yep yeah he's another one or it could be marillion but i think he's too young uh, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't put that on pod. <laughs> I don't want any witness. <laughs> fair, mom. yeah. Um, like, you, you, like a mom abandoning you for Tom or Lim, I'm like, all right, I can kind of see it. But a mom aban- aban- <laughs> abandoning you from really, and I'm just like, oh, no, that's that's embarrassing. <laughs> um, so yeah, he didn't really have anywhere to go, and he's raised by uh, cousins who don't treat him very well. Um, and all mm-hmm. this as we get this backstory, I love that it's like couched in Brienne being like, yeah, Pod's a really nice boy. Not a great squire. Everybody he squired for just fucking failed this kid. This kid doesn't know how to do nothing. He definitely can't fucking yeah. fight. Um, and um, this Sir Pod- Cedric had taught Podrick how to groom a horse and check his shoes for stones, and Sir Lorimer had taught him how to steal, but neither of them had given him much training with the sword, because yeah, one of them gets hanged for stealing a ham. <laughs> Which, yeah, uh, we find out that uh, that Pod was sort of like had also had some of the ham, but he's not um, he's not punished or murdered or murdered for stealing because of his last name. It says that Tywin sort of gave him a pass because of his name, um, and then uh, Kevin took charge of him, and that's how he ended up with Tyrion. But uh, so yeah, I was just like, oh, poor Pod. Also, this yeah. pod in the book is like very small and skinny, you know, mm-hmm. um, where mm-hmm. pod on the show was like a healthy looking young man, you know. Uh, yeah, he was much, much sturdier more and more. I think like the show, they had him be sort of re- like retiring, but they didn't have him be painfully shy. Mm-hmm. Like this mm-hmm. pod is the kind of shy where it's like difficult for him to interact with people yeah he can barely a, a, he, extremely different energy he can barely speak like he stammers yeah. and stutters through everything you know and the show on pot on the show was like a you know had a little bit of a stutter when he spoke but it wasn't anything that would really make it very apparent that this is a kid who just is socially doesn't like awkward like around mm-hmm. everybody you know um 
So they run into uh, a little little farmer couple. <laughs> I love to. I just have to mention. There's a part where Brienne is thinking about the Battle of the Black Water, and she's just like, "Okay, first of all, if he was even there." Like he claimed, which means that she doesn't really believe him. She only really reason, doesn't. And right? I was like, dude, the only he, he just he's... doesn't seem the type to lie about that, Brienne. Like, there's there's guys who lie about that shit, and then there's mm. Pod. Come on, yeah. And she's basically like, the only reason he didn't die is because nobody thought he was worth killing. And I'm just like, God damn, <laughs> <laughs> like fuck, sh- God damn. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, right? Like, super, super hard. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so she's been training him as they've been traveling together and uh, doing her best to try to, you know, make him a fighter. And they bump into this old couple and they um, make their way to, is it Maidenpool? And there's this moment, yes. too, where uh, these moments where Brienne meets people and the way they react to her are always so affecting to me. I just, um, I keep thinking that I would like get used to it and it won't be as impactful, you know, but for some reason, every time it really is for me. And she's talking here about the face that this farmer's wife makes when she looks at Brienne and how it's the face that women always make. And she talks briefly about like, she never knew what was worse. Like, the I think she says the waspish tongues of like highborn ladies, mm-hmm. and and then like some or or sometimes if women are of a like highborn women that are older will have a very cold response to her like it won't be apparent on their face that they're disgusted by her, but she'll know that they are. Yeah. Um. And then I think she ends it with basically like, but like whenever I just meet like a a commoner, like those are the worst because they just say whatever or react how you know what I mean. Like there's no mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. manners. There's no or societal filter. A, right, yeah. right, right. And uh, it just reminds me of how difficult it is for someone like Brienne to move through and navigate this world and how like she has to go through the same song and dance every Mm -hmm. single time she sees or meets a new person like it's got to be so fucking old to her by now you know it's got to be so fucking repetitive and old and like and there's nothing she can do but just experience it over and over and over again because people's reactions to her are so intense you know all i can think of is is always like the experience of people who are like visibly queer in the mm -hmm. world and anybody who tries to be like is say anything other than what an incredibly brave person you have to be because you're just out here trying to like be who you are and knowing Mm -hmm. that that is all it takes Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. some shit could very well just happen to you yep. just cuz yep. and that in that for me is is something mm-hmm. that like i think about constantly is the the energy it takes to be prepared to go out into the world and just be who you are when you know that and yep i could yep. never i am a soft bitch nah and <laughs> very admiring of those who are able to like get it every day get up and be like all right here i go out into fucking battle aka mm-hmm. living as a person yep yeah yeah and you just know how, like- could she put on a dress and just like blend in no you know what she fucking couldn't because no matter what she is hugely tall mm-hmm. and not beautiful and therefore mm-hmm. you put on a dress you're drawing a whole other kind of fucking criticism like yep exactly it doesn't matter exactly and if that's you're the, just different there's nothing to be done everybody will that, zero in on it that's exactly exactly the point like there are a lot of times people will just be like oh well you're just making yourself a target but you draw all this kind of attention to yourself but mm-hmm. like for some of us you know just as we are at our like most baseline is different enough 
that yep. it's going to be signaled no matter how you try to like hide it or conform, you know, people will, this is why when, you know, children are, you know, when you are occupying a marginalized space or identity and the bullying starts when you are a child from other children and you haven't even really started doing anything quote that different yet, but there's mm-hmm. something innately different about you that just comes through and, you know, and people pick up on that and, you know, so, yeah. so yeah, they're all that like, Oh, you could just try harder to not stick out and everything would be fine. Like, no, that's fucking gaslighting. But, um, but yeah, just, so anytime she- well, everybody should just embrace and love who they are, except for you. Definitely try to be an entirely different person. Otherwise, mm. it's your fault. Yeah, like it's the mm. same thing too when you when you talk about like uh, all the all the isms and, and the the obias. But like we're always talking. Like I think uh, one of our mutuals shared a thing about uh, how people are always talking about uh, you know body positivity and and just be healthy. Oh, you know what it was? Someone shared a screenshot of someone being like with all that physicality that Lizzo demonstrates, Mm -hmm. she should be a lot smaller. She must be Mm -hmm. trying, she must be trying to stay fat on purpose because it's her brand. Yep. Right. Yeah. I saw that tweet when it was posted and like all these people just making huge assumptions about what her diet must look like and all Mm -hmm. of this shit. Like, Mm -hmm. because nobody ever wants to just admit the fact that maybe Bodies don't work the way that we think. We're wrong. We're just wrong about a mm. lot of how this works. But and 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 it's been proven we're wrong like so many times and mm-hmm. doctors just ignore it because. But yeah, you know, everybody should just love themselves and not get plastic surgery except mm-hmm. for, you know, the things that probably mm-hmm. people would mock you for and tell you, "I can't believe that you didn't get that removed." I can't yep. believe that you didn't get that you know shrunken down or whatever Mm -hmm. we're real real quick to tell people how they should have handled fucking whatever Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep and then we don't even mean it you know no like a lot of a lot of our fucking our fucking support is so fucking contingent or just flat out fucking fake you know uh so anyway, so these moments for Brienne all always hit me really hard. Um, and it's a bummer because they, they keep happening. So I think I'm just going to be in for this. Like, this is just how she moves through this world and it just is never going to stop. Yeah. So, um, she is <laughs> having Real this quick, moment. Just like happy pride and everybody out there who is just like being yourself in the face of all this. I see you and I admire you a whole lot, a whole mm. lot. Because I'm here. a fucking coward and could never. So amazing. Hugs. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just like the, the mm, I don't want to get myself too sidetracked, but yeah. Co-signed. Co-signed. And it also like sucks because it shouldn't take that much courage. It shouldn't take extraordinary courage to just live the fucking life the way you, you are meant to live it. That should just mm-hmm. be like basic fucking shit. You just wake up and you get to be who you fucking are because that's who you are. Shouldn't you know? Yep. You shouldn't have to have like a whole fucking endless reservoir of strength to face every fucking day. Get the fuck out of here! People just want to get up, mm-hmm. go to work, hang out with their friends, have a little sex if that's their thing. Yeah, you know I mean, and like mm-hmm. have some Doritos. Like, why, why does every day have to be a fucking some flaming you know? Cheetos? <laughs> I don't know why, but flaming Cheetos for me are like the like that's that's a queer snack in my head is it is so, it really uh, queers out there let me know is that true or am i just making shit up i have <laughs> the opinion that we have we have gotten really out of hand with flaming shit uh i just saw we like, don't uh, need to be flaming all the time <laughs> look at me being homophobic i'm so sorry but truly we could just have a cheeto i love a regular cheeto classic yes yeah, we've just, we've just go we've gone way too far. We've lost all credibility when it comes to <laughs> like we just it's un- um but okay, so uh so she's having this moment with this this old this farmer's wife and they uh are all heading the same way to um Maidenpool and this um farmer is who tells Brienne that Randall is here 
like the him yeah. and his his army are have are occupying basically this little village and have begun rebuilding it and such and this brings her down an entirely different sort of you know trauma induced mm-hmm. fucking memory spiral um and yeah, she, she has a real quick like oh maybe i can uh maybe i could squeeze her time without him seeing mm-hmm, me mm-hmm, mm-hmm. No, you know not and, happen. and we don't know as readers like what is actually going on with this, right? She doesn't tell us right away what her experience with him is, just that uh, she had spent time with him when they were both fighting for Rinley, and that she doesn't fucking want to see him, but also she feels like she has a debt that she owes him as well. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, what the fuck? Like, all right, so she clearly does not like this man. She's like, coming very close to saying she hates him, which she doesn't really say about very many people, but yeah. it's clear he is not her favorite, but also she's indebted to him for something. So I'm trying to like think, you know, what could it possibly have been? And um, I was nowhere near close to what it turns out to be. Just so you guys know, <laughs> I was nowhere close. Um, and apparently also uh, the, his son is, is getting married and uh the, these this little farmer couple are on their way to try to sell their wares for this wedding feast that's coming. Um, and there's a, there's an aside about Dickon, who is actually pretty young. I just want to acknowledge Rashawn said his name without laughing. Good on you. Uh, you <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, he's pretty young still here. Yeah. Um, which again is just, uh, kind of startling because in the show he's like grown you know he's like a grown ass man in the show (laughs) yep yeah um so i was just like yeah he's sam's little brother and sam is only like how old and he was like grown enough that when dickon came around that his father waited to determine whether or not dickon was going to be the type he wanted before he sent Mm -hmm. sam away Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so yeah so um so yeah so he's a uh, uh quite young and that kind of like took me off took me by surprise um and she thinks uh it makes her think of her being betrothed when she was young and how close she got to like being married off but luckily for her uh the kid that she was uh betrothed to like I think he dies uh yes yeah. Yeah, because she says, had he lived, they would have been wed within a year of her first flowering. So, yeah, the little boy she was supposed to be married ends up ends up dying from some, like, disease that takes out his whole family. So, she really, like, dodged a bullet there. <laughs> <laughs> I, no, no offense to the dead kid. No offense. No offense. <laughs> so, yeah, this, uh, I'm trying to find, the farmer even says something. Yeah, here it is. Um. We used to have an ox, but the wolves made off with him. They took off our daughter, too, and had their way with her. But she come wandering back after the battle down at Duskendale. The ox never did. So, again, fucking yep. women just, mm-hmm. yeah, cool, cool, just, cool. Just being fucking collateral damage that nobody gives a, sh- a fuck about, you know. Yep. Um, and then, like, fucking when they finally get to the town, like, the first thing that happens is the guys at the fucking gate. Are like gonna fucking rape the farmer's wife? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like they're gonna steal their eggs and rape his wife. Like it's just Tuesday. What the fuck? Yep. What the fuck? Yep. Jesus Christ. Um. So yeah. So they they get there and um. It's such an awful scene because the farmer can't do shit. He just stands there. He, he doesn't say a fucking like, word. He he, he attempts at first, but they all have weapons, and there's like eight of them or whatever so at first he attempts just like you know don't that's not fair with the let's see i'm trying to find it our eggs are for lord mooton um the farmer's wife spoke up that's not enough not near enough i say it is for the eggs and you as well two of the guards leaned their halberds against the wall and pulled the woman away from the cart struggling the farmer watched gray faced but dared not move no i guess he doesn't yeah Mm -mm. yeah you're right yeah and like 
Because like, what I'm is not, he like, going like, to do? Exactly. Like, I'm not shaming him for standing there watching. It's actually, like, even more upsetting that he is, like, so aware of how powerless he is that he doesn't even move an inch. Like, he doesn't even. Mm-hmm. It, you know what else, too? This is this might be a reach. You guys might think I'm reaching. But it's it seems to me, and this is, it seems to me that, like, he doesn't move a muscle because this isn't the first time this has happened to him. Yeah. Especially when we find out about the daughter too. Like mm-hmm. it's like a almost like a trauma response. Like like the, the 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 reflex to fight has been wiped out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you you're just standing there because it just feels all so inevitable. Uh and there's like he, he like And he like underst- maybe if you just like <laughs> chill, they will only rape her and not kill her. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you do something, they will kill both of you, and so I guess we'll just hope for the best. Yeah, like yeah, and and like because we know that that you know he's been through this but again with his daughter, and then like people just coming through, and and taking his daughter away. Like I like to imagine that maybe he had tried to fight when that first happened because you know your instinct, mm, and that yeah. it went so badly and that he ended up not even being able to save his daughter that like the fight has been beaten out of him at this point you know yeah just like oh this is just what life is like for us now every time we run Mm -hmm. into men with swords on their fucking hips so brienne steps in you know and then all the guys like surround her all the guards and i feel like she could have taken them I was not i do too quite frankly guys i'm gonna keep it a buck with y'all i was not scared for her at all (laughs) But before it comes to blows, someone – I like Brand too. I want to mention that she uh, – when she steps up, uh, this man at the gate is just like, uh, oh, you, you must be an outlaw. Well, have you heard what Tarly does with outlaws? And she's like, yeah, I know what Tarly does with outlaws. And I know what he does with rapers too. Because mm-hmm. – and I think that's interesting too because this, this Tarly, Tarly is – uh, you know, as a judge and, and his idea of justice, he is, when you talk about being like lawful evil, like mm-hmm. he's not going to let people get away with that. Like he's going to punish no. that behavior because that is like antisocial behavior. <laughs> so mm-hmm. he's, he's not like evil in the sort of, oh, I just, he's not like a fucking Vargo ho evil, evil. You know what I mean? He's not no. like that. He's a, he's a whole other thing. But she says that, and these dudes are not really particularly impressed with her saying that, you know, she knows Charlie. And, uh... Which I think is a mistake, personally. Like, have you seen I, this man? But okay. I, this is this is what I'm... I, this, exactly. I'm so glad you bring that up. Because these guys are acting like this out of the gate. But half a mile into the village, Charlie is hanging people for doing way mm-hmm. less shit than this. Yep. Right, what you're talking about doing right now. You're stealing and threatening rape while he is literally in town cutting the fingers off of people who steal. And he's like, I don't, I don't, I don't get the disconnect, but you know, whatever. Maybe they're just, maybe they are not men that are in service of him. Maybe they are new to the game. I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking. <laughs> but it just it seems it could, like a real lapse be like, judgment. Because he's visiting, right? Maybe they don't know him that well. Right, Tarly, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like maybe they're not like men that have been following him, you know, yeah. through, through the through the years. They're just like some local guys or so some guys that wandered into Maiden Pool from somewhere else and like they don't really know how he gets down. Because this just yeah. seems like an incredible lapse in judgment for who is in charge of Maiden Pool right now. But they're unimpressed with her saying she knows him and then before anything else happens someone else steps in and we just it's just a voice you know a voice that that uh tells these guys what lord randall does to rapers which is uh gelds them or sends them to the wall or sometimes both and he also tells them and he cuts the fingers off of thieves which is making me feel like again maybe these guys don't know who Land- who randall Turner yeah. is you know what i mean or, that could be <laughs> um and so I'm reading this and I'm just like, oh, well, this is a nice little guy that showed up just in time to, you know, save our faves from having to get into a little scuffle. Mm-hmm. And then 
Brienne's reaction to this gentleman, who we get a description of, I don't recognize him. I don't know. Uh, I don't mm-hmm. feel like I've ever met him before, right? No. So she describes him, but it says him. And then it says his voice was a punch in her stomach. So it's, I have like two seconds to be like, oh, great, a friend. And then it's like, oh, wait, no. <laughs> not a friend not yeah. a friend at all um and he he steps in and he tells these guys you know this is brienne beauty the maid of tarth and i'm like oh okay i don't like this guy immediately now because he's using these names mm-hmm. that i don't that, that we know are things people call her out of derision and and then also tells them that she killed renly and half of his rainbow guard calls her mean and ugly um, and then like takes a shot at one of the dudes, which does not make up for any of the shit that he's saying about her, in my opinion. Agree. And, uh, fully agree. Mm-hmm. The, and then the guys all just like laugh and, uh, like, we're well, all she killed, buds here. Am I right? right? And he's like, yeah. well, if she killed Ridley, maybe we should just fucking seize her. Right. Because, uh, you know, that's against the law or whatever. She broke the law. She killed Ridley. And then this mystery man is says, fucking why? Ridley was a rebel? We were all rebels, you know what I mean? We've all been, mm-hmm. like, had two or three kings since then. It's all news. <laughs> um, and then, and what really, like, bummed me out, the old man, the old farmer, thanks this mm-hmm. mystery man uh, for saving them, calls him a true knight. It's plain to see. Yeah. Um, and I don't know, I guess it, maybe because she wasn't successful, but like, there's no thinking of Brienne for stepping in or attempting well, she's not to. not a true knight. Yeah. Like that shit, that shit really stung. You are mm-hmm. a true knight. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. like, is, is though I, you know, my sympathy is laid with the small folk. But also, fuck you, dude. <laughs> mm-hmm. Agree, agree, agree. <laughs> Look, small folk, zignant. You know, I mean, Happens. you could have, you like, I mean, I'm sorry for what happened to your daughter, and I'm sorry for what almost happened to your wife, but also, like, show a little bit of class or something. Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> wow. He just I'm sorry. The, I the just, small folk. <laughs> 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 oh, fuck. That's the opposite of what they can do, Rashawn. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless oh, shit. y'all know what i mean <laughs> um no but for real though like the idea that no this, i agree you know, like come on mm-hmm. uh so this guy whose name is sir hyle by the way who this is the guy who was like you know swung in to to calm this whole situation down uh is insisting that he needs to deliver her to lord tarley yeah um and uh she it's not necessarily being under arrest you know he doesn't say that but it's just like no we i have to take you to him so he knows that you're here Mm -hmm. um and it's sort of like uh you've got to pay your respects yeah, yeah, I can't, I can't, like, he would want to know that you were here. And if he found out mm-hmm. that I knew and I didn't let him know, I would have to answer for that. Um, he asked her what she's doing. She could not tell him the truth uh, about Sansa, at least. And yeah. she just she's says, about to be like, oh, my sister. And then she realizes, mm-hmm. oh, he knows I don't have any fucking sisters. Shit, yeah, shit, yeah. shit, <laughs> shit, what do I do? <laughs> so she ends up being like, you know, I'm looking for this place that's called the Stinking Goose. And, um... It's a little like dirty bar in Maidenpool, and um, he takes her to Tarly. The description of that bar when we get there, so <laughs> right. <laughs> when he talks, when she tells him what he's looking for, he says to her, "Oh, the stinking goose, an apt name, the stinking part at least." <laughs> Which I love the, the like the, the, the distinction. Like he's like, "Not, I don't want you to think when you get there, there's going to be actual goose." It's, it's not going to be geese there. That's that, that's not the literal part. I <laughs> want you to be clear. It's it's only the stinking part that's apt. <laughs> because then I picture a bar with a bunch of geese in it, who I think are like the worst birds anyway. So <laughs> a bar for geese. It's a wrong neighborhood, motherfucker. 
<laughs> you don't want to be at the goose bar. They don't play there. They really don't. You know, oh, I, you guys, y'all know how I feel about geese. Just. I like that you mm-hmm. say that. Why? Why do you think that we know that? I feel like I've talked about it a lot because I really don't like them. <laughs> I really, really don't like them, you guys. They I gotta listen. find this fucking video my friend posted. This woman is trying to walk. It's like a, a surveillance camera outside of an office building, and this woman is just looking at her phone, walking into the building from the parking lot, and you see this goose off camera come walking up to her, and she doesn't notice it right away because the, she's looking at her phone, and then all of a sudden the goose just launches itself at uh-huh. her, like uh-huh. at her head, and this uh-huh. woman starts freaking out, and the goose backs up and comes at her again, flying at her, and then this car pulls up, and it's somebody who had been about to pull out, and they open the door so that the woman can get in with them to escape the goose, and she opens the door, she climbs in. But the goose is so fast that it climbs into the oh car after her as she's closing God. the door. So you just see this moment of like just a tip of a wing still showing. And then the door opens again and the goose gets like shoved out. <laughs> and the car finally like pulls away. But I was just like, can you imagine the terror of like you oh got away? God. This car pulled up and saved you. And then the goose is in the car. <laughs> oh, my God. See? Oh, I rest my terrifying. Case. I rest my keys. I gotta find that video and send it to you because it's really so Please funny. don't. Please don't. <laughs> Charlotte, when I lived in Charlotte, Charlotte was lousy with geese. Um, I don't know why, but they just were. I never lived anywhere else that had as many geese just fucking wandering the streets, wreaking havoc everywhere they went. Lousy with them. And one of the things was... There were a lot of man-made little ponds everywhere in Charlotte. Like, they just went through this resurgence of landscaping where every little business park got a little pond made there. You know, I don't know why. Okay. But they were, they were so every- weird. Okay. So, I've told the story before about when I worked at the hotel. The hotel, they had done the same thing. They built, like, a little man-made stream. And it pulled at one end right behind the hotel. And then it went like through for a couple miles through this area of the city and then pulled at the other end. And I would have to walk across a little bridge to get to the employee entrance from the bus stop, you know, from the bus stop down a path, cross this little bridge and then up a hill to get into the employee entrance. And you had to cross the bridge over the pond. And there were swans and there was like a made it. Paired bond, swans, and then geese. More geese than you've ever seen. And you would have to run for your life across the bridge. (laughs) You would literally, like, yeah, you I have I am a full grown woman and I have run from geese. And then I had a doctor's office that was in another part of the city in this business park area, and they had done the same thing. This man made waterway for whatever reasons, right? Mm-hmm. Again, lousy with geese. So not only are is there just shit everywhere, you know, because they just shit willy nilly. They don't give a fuck. Oh yeah. But but they were and 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 it was always fucking baby season. I don't know why it was always fucking baby geese season. And they get so aggressive. They're already aggressive on GP. But if there are mm-hmm. babies around, these motherfuckers. So yeah, I don't fuck with them. I don't like them. I don't fuck with them. <laughs> and yes, I have been chased by them. It is not funny. <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a little funny. funny. It's a little funny. <laughs> and and uh, I will say that like it was such a well known experience of everybody that worked in the hotel that sometimes us running from the geese would be on a security camera. So once you would once you would get to the employee interest, the, the, the punch clock was right outside security. So sometimes you would get there and they would just be laughing at you by the time you got to the punch clock. <laughs> because they have watched you running oh, for your life. God. I haven't oh, thought about that. But yeah, but yeah, they would just sit and watch the security camera and they could see they could they could see <laughs> I like the idea of like security having a little like uh 
sign that they put the current like geese danger level every day so that you can prep before you cross the bridge be like uh today we are at orange we would advise you to be on your guard today we are at red we recommend a different entrance we're going to be roping the bridge off please take the detour around the building yeah that'd be a good job to just be like i'm in charge of the uh, the goose threat level for the day <laughs> Oh, you guys, it was fucking awful. It really was. <laughs> oh, man, that's amazing. So, but, uh, so, um, all right, all right. Sorry about that, though. Took us way off track, though. But, yeah, yeah. Geese, mm -mm. Fuck them. Yeah. Really. Fuck Same them. to dive bars. Like, look, some dive bars, it's like, oh, it's a dive bar in a delightful way, which I think isn't a real dive bar. Mm -hmm. A dive bar is a place where you should be a little bit worried about the drinks. Like, I love a good dive bar. You know what I'm saying? You know, you, you know I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Um, I don't feel like – does Oscars, like, quite qualify as a dive? I feel like it was too nice. Not, not anymore. Not yeah. Anymore. I feel like once you start making food – ah, uh, no, I take that back. Yeah. I take that back because sometimes the food is, like, the question. That's the part yeah. that makes it the yeah. dive. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, it's a dive bar in a very, like – I'm not trying to say hipster. That's not the hipster. word I want. But that's, what I'm thinking of. but that's not what I mean. It marks all the check boxes to be a dive bar. The things that keep it uh, from being fully a dive bar anymore is the way the neighborhood it's in has changed. Yeah. You know what I that mean? That makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like McGlinchey's is a prototype dive bar, has always been, but its location is right in center city so it's like a dive bar for center city but like, so it's not it's that not like is a, a good metric is like the location has a location. lot to do with whether it's a yeah. dive yeah. yeah so like the aesthetic of the bar itself is is a dive bar like the drinks are not fancy and relatively cheap and da 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 da, da. but it's not like a dive bar like your neighborhood corner bar that is really about that life <laughs> there was a a place in hartford when i lived there that was uh only like around the corner from the really sketchy apartment i lived in um i'm trying to think what the name of it was because it was something like uh like vegas boulevard something like mm. really silly sounding and they sold <laughs> I still think about this sometimes because I'm like, man, I miss that place. They sold ten dollar margaritas that were twenty ounces, mm. huge cups, mm -hmm. and they sold pizza slices. And this was like decent fucking pizza, man. And it was, I swear to God, they made these pizzas and sliced them into quarters. And we're like, that's a slice. It was three slices, <laughs> but it was a slice, five bucks. So you could go and spend $15 and have dinner and get drunk. Yep. And it was the shit. It was the best. <laughs> I, it was like the schedule. You would sit there and watch people break it into cars. Like you could see them from the, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. and it was sort of up to you whether you wanted to fucking bother. I really enjoyed one time where there was somebody who was just like, hey, is that your car, man? And the guy suddenly like puts his thing away and starts sauntering away. And they're like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You just out for a walk, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> As they're watching him walk away. <laughs> but uh, you know, yeah, a good dive the, is a, a real beauty. The place that I first met Stephen was uh, McGlinchey's. And we used to, you could go with, you could go to McGlinchey's with five dollars, and you could get a pitcher of beer and shots for five dollars. There you go. Yep. <laughs> like you, I'm. You could get like a like a a pint and a shot, and that shit was like two dollars and ninety cents. It's <laughs> crazy. I mean, this, man, this was a long, right? Like it was like yeah. <laughs> I'm telling you guys, the 90s were fucking lit. Y'all don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> the dollar was strong. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, all right. So she ends up telling this Heil guy that she's here for the stinking goose. And he uh, knows where it is and is willing to take her. But first, they got to go see Tarly. And we get like a walk through town. And she's noticing, hey, this place is really... Uh, coming up y'all got like mm -hmm. a lot of shit accomplished and we find out that uh 
Charlie is not the kind of man who lets people just be sitting around not doing shit. Yeah, you you're not just going to be laying around under on his watch. So he's got these motherfuckers out here working. Uh, and, you know, it's it's probably for the best, right? I'm not really mad about it. I think it seems it. like it's paying off, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you've suffered these horrible losses. It's probably good for the spirit to be rebuilding after mm-hmm, mm-hmm. what everybody and, has been through, you know? And it even sounds like she's suggesting that they're building, like, better than what had been there before. She mentioned yeah, that there are some yeah. things going up that instead of being, like, you know, wood and thatch houses or whatever, they're, like, going up with stone uh, you know, and uh, new roofs are being uh, placed on the sept, and so yeah, it's mm-hmm. he's got like an urban renewal thing happening. I don't know if his rent's going to go up. Is this certification? Does this count? <laughs> I feel like it doesn't count because it's all the same people. Okay, you no, know? but I don't know if the uh, tax bracket would change based on living here now. Like maybe, <laughs> you know, t- property tax change. Right. Perhaps. I mean, yeah, like if shit was, if it was a wooden in before and now it's a stone in, I feel like that's bumping you up a tax bracket. Yeah. I mean, it really <laughs> depends on what kind of assistance they got. Is this, is this stone coming out of his own pocket? Like, you <laughs> know, you an FHA loan? <laughs> exactly. We've is got this got a HUD of, house? Uh, in, <laughs> an initiative going where everything is being paid for by the state. Get your mouth off the government's teat. I really enjoy when people say government teat. I don't know why I think it's so funny. It's so it's so like it's so awful. It really is an awful image. It's the only time they think of the women like any other time that people gender the government as being male, except for when you want to tell people to like stop like taking advantage of social programs and suddenly it's it's a it's a woman, you know. Mm -hmm. Suddenly it's a teat that you're suckling suckling. Any other time, it's Uncle Sam, right? <laughs> but they don't talk about Uncle Sam's teeth. Nope, they sure don't. They don't, you know, they don't. Everybody ever says, Stop sucking Uncle Sam's dick. Like, that means an entirely different thing when you say that. <laughs> That's an entirely different energy oh, than, God. you know, suckling at the teeth. But, uh, but anyway, now that I've got this Uncle Sam's dick in my hand, I'm just, I don't, I don't like any of that. Uncle Ugh. Sam's teats. <laughs> no good. Anyway, um, sorry guys. So sorry about that. They, they find uh, Lord Tarly, as we talked about at the beginning of the episode, uh, handing out justice. And uh, yeah, I like the way she, I like the way it's written because it's just such a weird phrase. They found Lord Tarly in the fish market doing justice, like doing yep. justice. It's such a I, I know we've heard that before, I think, but it's just an interesting way to use that word. He's got justice bent over. Yeah. Uh, 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 that is not <laughs> what I was thinking. <laughs> I was just talking about the verb, but oh, that's very different than what I was thinking. <laughs> Good God. Um, And we get a, a little bit of a, like, there's, you know, just some, some, Run of the mill type nonsense people been getting into. Uh, there's already a couple bodies that are swinging from the gallows, and there's uh, so there's a guy that um, stole some food that was left over in a sept, and he is punished not only for stealing, but because he stole from a religious temple. You know, the the crime yeah. is even greater. So instead of losing like one or two fingers for being a thief. Uh, Charlie says that this man has to lose seven fingers and you can leave his thumbs. And that's some weird math. Is this guy already <laughs> missing fingers? I mean, it's, right? it, 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 I think he's like saying specifically don't take his thumbs out of the seven. Because oh, if you, okay. there's still one other finger it could be. Got you. Got you. Okay. You know that, makes more, that makes more sense than what I was thinking. <laughs> uh, Which, uh, you know, if I was going to keep any of my fingers, I would want the thumbs. Oh, you got to have thumbs. Yeah, that's what I would definitely. I mean, without think. without thumbs, you know, human beings. That's like the that's like the one thing that we got that gave us the edge over everything else. They should have <laughs> never gave us thumbs. That's where it all went wrong. That's true, mm-hmm. man. Mm-hmm. We should come up with some sort of supervillain who's like bent on removing thumbs from the equation for human <laughs> beings to try and fix environmental problems. <laughs> this is where it went wrong. <laughs> uh just going back in time. It's a weird butterfly effect. Part six. I don't know how many of those they made. 
I thought they only made one. Were there more than no, that? No, they had another. There was at least two. Really? Yeah. Oh. Hold on. Uh. No, no time to hold on. <laughs> effects movies. Let's see. Um, all right. Sorry. Go ahead. I'm, 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 I'm looking into uh, this. So. Uh, three. There's three. Jesus. I had no idea. That mm-hmm. seems like something no one asked for. <laughs> um. So she's watching this man lose his fingers and it makes her think about once again, she flashes back to Jamie who she's been thinking about a lot in this chapter as you know, it opened with her trying to remember where they were and where the wall was and where he lost his hand. And then she's being reminded of it again. And then there's a guy who gets, you know, there's a baker who was like using sawdust with his flour. Um, and then, a uh, uh, uh a uh, sex worker, a whore, they call her, a haggard, gray-faced whore who was accused of giving the pox to four soldiers and somehow this is her fault. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. you knew who you were fucking. You don't have any responsibility, but I guess, you know, you just not, I guess if you're sick and you're still taking customers, then that's on you, which I don't know. Yep. I guess it's kind of fair, but I didn't like it. Look, I didn't like agreeing with him here. But this is sort of like the, a public the health thing crisis. is like <laughs> how many options did she have open to her if mm-hmm. she didn't want to starve to death? That's the real question. Mm-hmm. Like, and and was there somebody available to treat her pox? Does she have access to health care? Mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. uh, but he's not concerned with any of that, and she gets a, a sentence of just like having her private parts washed with lye and then thrown in the dungeons, which is just horrific. So horrific, you know. So there's a couple. This is more. one of the things that I remember of from these books. Like that sentencing stuck with me so hard for some reason. Oh, really? It's a ruling that was thrown out so casually. It's mm-hmm. easy to miss, even if you're not real like paying attention to his sentencing, and you don't see it happen. You just hear that it's being done, and that's the end of it. Yep. And there's something about how casual the whole thing is that really mm-hmm. fucking got yep. to me. You know, it feels like, like this is almost like the standard sentence for this type of uh, transgression, you know? Yeah. Like this is yep. like a minimum sentencing requirement. And the idea too um, is that even though this is fiction, I I don't find it difficult to believe that this is a thing that would have happened to women. You mm-hmm. know? Agree. Wash, totally. Washing out with lie. Like, I don't know if you guys know what lie is. I'm sure we all understand what it is. And, like, trying to imagine having that. You've seen Fight Club. In your most, like, you know, like, oh, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's torture. It's torture. That's what they're Literal. about to do to yeah. this woman. Um, and it's just super gross. Uh, and, like, and like you said, it's just, it's so casual. It's like one sentence, you know. It's just, we used to fuck. advise women to wash out their insides with Lysol. So yep. this sort of yep. thing as a punishment sounds completely yep. legit. Yeah. They used to like, yeah, you would douche with like, you know, harsh cleaning products. Mm-hmm. Um, up in, and not that long ago either, guys. Oh, we're yeah. About, no. We're talking about brands that exist today that we all recognize. <laughs> yep. Um. So women's health care is a fucking I'm not even going sickening to sickening situation. Not even not even going to say anything because that is a yep. whole other fucking thing. Uh, there's this moment too. I like this uh, where uh, Charlie looks up and puts eyes on her, and mm-hmm. he makes it, he frowns at her, but there is not anything that indicates that he recognizes her. She says he frowns at her, but his eyes betrayed not a flicker of recognition. And Frowning it's not is just his instinct. Like, it like is, and also like I, I don't know if I read it wrong, but it never occurred to me that he doesn't know who she is. This is just how much control he has over the way he presents. Interesting. You know? Okay, I, gotcha. like, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't think that it that he didn't know who she was. Um, I just felt like he's just not going to let them let anybody see his face. Mm-hmm. But um. So finally, uh, oh wait, there's one more guy too. I guess I should mention uh, who claims that he's innocent, which which I don't. I get it. I get it. Like the instinct, like no, I didn't do it. It wasn't me. But Tarly is just like, uh, you sure it wasn't you? I mean, <laughs> let me get a look at them dice though. And then the guy is just like, well, the 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 dice, you know. 
yeah, it's they true. are They're lucky, lucky for me, dice, right? But but that mm-hmm. doesn't really mean. And he just gets cut off uh, entirely. He's like, I'm not hearing any more of this nonsense. You're gonna take his finger. He can pick whatever, whichever hand he wants. Uh, and then he's done for the day. With his at least I, doing just there's something thing. about like letting him pick his whatever finger mm-hmm, he wants. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, you know, mm-hmm. eh, it's not bad. Like, mm-hmm. how fucking horrifying is mm-hmm. it? The transformation of my interpretation of his justice when I'm like, well, you know, I guess that's a fairly generous term, I suppose. Yeah. Yikes, Tosh. Also, too, <laughs> like, not only is it that take a little finger from whichever hand he wants, but the hand he doesn't pick is going to get a nail through the palm. Yep. I think if I read that right. Correct. So, um, yes. um, which again, you know, that sucks, but it's not permanent. Oh, it's, you know uh, what? You know, hmm. I I read that hmm. wrong. I think I read that wrong, guys. I don't think because so. the, there's two guys. Is it two guys standing in front of Charlie, or or no? No, I thought it was just the one. His accuser, a sailor of galleys, came off next. His accuser was an archer of Lord Moonton's garrison with a bandaged hand and a sign on his breast. If it pleased my lord, this bastard put his dagger through my hand. He said I was cheating him at dice. And then Lord Tarly says, were you? And he says, no, never. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if he No, means... I think I think you had that right. Yeah. Yeah. I could I couldn't tell if the other means that the 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 accuser who accused the guy of stealing had put a dagger through the the not stealing. All right, I'm sorry. Let me back up. There's a man who accuses somebody of being a cheat. And the right. man, the cheat is in front of Tarly with. Uh, so you're thinking the cheater got punished with the uh, nail through his hand because he stabbed the other guy's hand. I, I, I was thinking, I was thinking the accuser. Oh my god! His accuser was an archer of lords. He was a I am so and a salmon. This on his is breast. not that complicated. It's not, and it's not even that important. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> but anyway, so either this guy loses a finger and gets a nail in his other hand, or the cheater loses a finger and the accuser gets a hand, a nail through his hand, as punishment for putting a dagger through the hand of the cheater, like taking justice in his own hands. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. I think I think that's what happened. Okay, but I don't know. It doesn't matter. I got you. That wasn't how I read it. I thought it was that the nail went through the the hand of the same guy. But you may be right. Uh, Let us know, everybody. Chime in. Hit us up on yeah. the responses in the comments. <laughs> and, uh, you know, engagement. The com- engagement. The, the comments are going to be why did y'all spend so much time on that? <laughs> it was not <laughs> <important>. probably. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Um. So finally, finally. We are done. And uh, she steps forward and addresses Tarly. And she says she felt like she was eight years old again. And he looks at her and it's just like, my lady, what do we owe this honor? I hate it. I hate it. He just started talking and I already hate it. (laughs) What what, What do you hate? Why? Just, just the way, like... What do we owe this long pause honor? Which is just gross and snide. Mm-hmm. Unnecessarily so. She just got here. You you know. Uh, and she, she tries to say, you know, I'm looking for somebody. And she can't get all the words out. And he just is like, he takes her stumbling and starts to speak over her. And it's just like, first of all, how are you going to find him if you don't know his name? And then it goes right right to the Jew slay Lord Renly. Mm-hmm. And um she realizes he's judging me right now. Like I just watched him judge those other people. And I'm just like, Well, you're not here to be judged by him. Fuck him. He doesn't get to judge you. <laughs> um and she says no and starts to go into like the sorcery bit, and again he cuts her off again and just blames her for having been there in the first place you should have never put mail on or a sword you should have never left your father's hall this was a war not a ball you should not be there and i should ship you back to your father right fucking now like i beg your pardon who the Mm -hmm. fuck are you to be shipping her anywhere it's so funny the the 
it's this is a war not a ball when he's accusing her of not being womanly and feminine enough so it's like well wait a minute which is it is she trying too hard to be a man by dressing like a or is she like too girly to live like what are you saying because mm-hmm. neither of those feels like they quite go together but okay right yeah and uh she counters you know i'm i'm about the throne's business and she asked pod mm-hmm. to go get her little her little decree and it's very like generic it just says that you know she's on the king's business so now he's just like oh what sort of business and i'm thinking if it was your fucking business you would already know about it and if the king yep. wanted it to be everybody's business it would have been in the letter but he tells her basically you're gonna fucking tell me and if you lie to me i'm gonna hang you now he doesn't that is not in quotes that is in italics right mm-hmm. so is that what he said to her or is she hearing what he said to the other men he was judging just moments before where he tells I take the dice it as guy, that right that's mm-hmm. what i thought but i uh so but 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 so i i think she he said lie to me and i will hang you to one of the guys he was judging so i think mm-hmm. she's just remembering that wording okay. and it's influencing her response here because okay yeah she she tells him know. the truth she goes right out and she just says um you know songs to start and uh this moment where she just fucking blurts out that she might have gone to the veil after he's like she probably ran north to join like whoever still supports her family and <laughs> the way she says brianne heard herself blurt out she might have gone to the veil to her mother's sister. You just like it, it just it just reeks of again how intimidated she is by him. You know? Yeah. That she's like especially because she had told Pi before he got to town to like be real careful, don't say anything, don't offer information on you know needlessly. Mm-hmm. And then here mm-hmm. she is just like spilling all the beans. <laughs> I hate this so much for her. Mm-hmm, I always mm-hmm. hate any time that you've got a character that you know is like capable and they run into a particular person who just puts their like fear into them. Mm-hmm. That's always so hard to read because it's such a like real thing. You yeah, know, yeah. like everybody has a person in their lives who can do this to them, who can make them just sort of absolutely uh, like become not who they are for a mm-hmm. moment because mm-hmm. they forget who yep. the fuck they are. And he definitely has that effect on her. One hundred percent. And it is it is difficult to to read, especially like you said, when we know how powerful she is, uh, physically at least. Mm-hmm. Um, so he tells her that Lysa is dead and that there's nobody at the veil but Littlefinger, and uh, tells her basically she can go on her little adventure and her quest if she want to, but like when you eventually get fucking raped, don't you come crying to me about it mm-hmm right uh just like the fuck dude and yeah. then he looks at Hyo and is like and by the way you shouldn't you be at your fucking gate i told you to stand there didn't i uh and the guy is like yeah you did but i thought you'd want to basically know that she was here and again tarly tarly doesn't let nobody finish a sentence also nope nope <laughs> Nope. Uh, he knows what he you're going to say and much. he doesn't have any interest. Not a drop of interest. Uh, and so this is then he's gone. Um, and Brienne is standing there just like, what the fuck? Lysa's dead now. Like, mm-hmm. I really thought I was on to something about like heading that way. Like, fuck. Um, also, I love too the story has already like traveled the realm because he not only says that Lysa is dead, but that some singer pushed her off a mountain. <laughs> yes, there's something like about saying pushed her off a mountain <laughs> instead of just like out the moon door. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That I don't know why, but that cracked me up. Like <laughs> it's just there's like some... the the drama of that. Yes, there's yeah, there's something <laughs> there's something also about like it doesn't matter about the fine details. You know, nope. like it's not important enough to know about the details or to get them right. <laughs> she was up on a mountain and he pushed her off it. Done. <laughs> if it were more important, I would know more about it. Oh, God. Um, so she uh, tells Pod to go deal with their horses. She tells this high, high old guy that he can get the fuck out of her face. She has no use for him and she's going to find this bar on her own. And, um, 
then uh, we finally get her telling, I think, if she tells us about what happened or if she's just remembering what happened at High Garden about what they did to her. I can't remember if she she's actually just remembering. tears Pod that. She's just thinking to herself, right? Yeah, I don't think Pod has any idea about okay. any of it. All right, because when he asked her, like, because uh, he, Pod has, you know, seen this interaction and he knows that, that she doesn't like this fucking dude. So when a mm-hmm. guy leaves, um, he's just like, what did he do to you? And she thinks, oh, he might not be, like, well, well-spoken, but he's not fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, yeah, I guess they, their conversation ends that way because this is where she sends him off to the stables. So she eventually finds the right bar, and uh, she's going to stake out until this man that she's looking for, whose name is uh, Nimble Dick. <laughs> Which, I mean, I guess I, it may I as well like, be right. There's a, probably a lot I could say about that, but I'm just going to keep it moving. Because there's all the jokes are very obvious, and you guys don't need me yep. for that for books that are 20 years old. You've heard all the jokes, so it's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and while she's waiting, I think, is when we finally get the reveal about what happened to her. And it yeah. is, like you said, it is some real high school shit. She shows yep. up, you know, at Renly's host to offer her services and all these other knights are very sweet to her. They are sending her flowers and singing her songs and sending her trinkets and courting her. It's what she says is the first time she's ever been courted is when she shows up to Renly's host and she can't figure out what's going on. You know, there are, she's not the only woman that's there there's a lot of camp followers, you know, that are available. There's um, some ladies from the more noble families that have thrown in with Renly who are around. Mm-hmm. And every time somebody is nice to her, she is screaming inside, why? Why are you being nice to me? What do you want? Which in and of itself is fucking devastating. The idea yeah. that when people are nice to you, you are automatically suspicious. And then we find out that she was right to be suspicious. And that is just like a double knife in the fucking stomach. You yeah. Know? Because she was fucking right. She was right. And we find out that all these guys have basically made that dumbass bet that men seem incapable of re- resisting. You know, this story plays out over and over and over again across all kinds of media because it is something that is a real thing that men do. You know, Mm -hmm. whether they call them like pig parties or whatever. They have made a bet that whoever she sleeps with, whoever gets her virginity, wins the bet. And there's like just a giant pile of money at this point because so many people have thrown in. Yeah. Um, And it started out between just a few small like a small number of guys but word has gotten out and more and more people have joined this bet and some of the people that have joined aren't as honorable as the initial people which is hysterical to me Mm -hmm, that you know mm -hmm. the men who started this are considered more honorable than the people who joined later and that is what makes the stakes so high that Charlie could no longer ignore what's going on. I think one of somebody's squire or something has overheard some people, you know, talking about it. Um, and yeah, there was like a hint of like, maybe they were going to try and rape her. And he was yeah. like, well, okay, she is nobility. So we can't let that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. He says that, uh, the, you know, the stakes are growing larger every day and it was only a matter of time before one of them decided to claim the prize by force. And when Charlie is telling her this, she says back to him, but they're knights, like anointed knights. She can't even wrap her head around that one of them would actually try to physically hurt her, that they would rape her in order to Mm -hmm. win this bet because her ideals of what a knight is are still so high, you know? Yeah. And he says to her, Basically, yeah, not only are there knights, but they're all fucking honorable, too. This is your fault. 
Mm-hmm. This is your fault. And she flinches and starts to stammer about how she didn't do anything to deserve this. She didn't encourage them. And he says, just being here is encouragement. Basically, why is your skirt so short? You know, yep. that that shit. Uh, yep. And and does this, you know, you're not supposed to be here. War is not for a woman. You know, if you have any regard for your honor, you'll go home right now. Beg your father to find a husband for you. And we get this line. Uh, a woman's war is in the birthing bed. Again, I'm really mm-hmm. tired of people saying this, really, quite frankly. I'm tired of hearing this. Yep. I feel like I've heard this a lot across this this universe, and I'm tired of it. Um, so then finally, her memory is interrupted because Nimble Dick shows up, and they have a conversation, and he's, she's paying him. She's bribing him for little bits of information. And he tells her, what does he tell her? He fooled the fool by selling them a map to where some boats are, I guess. So the, it's like, it's supposed to be a way that they can get out of town because this guy was like showing up all the time, buying people drinks. And then one day some soldiers came and the guy suddenly got real spooked and was like, how can I get out of here without them spotting me? And Dick was like, Oh, I told them about this Harbor that smugglers used it wasn't my fault that smugglers haven't used that place to smuggle for like 20 years <laughs> and he said that there is like a uh there were two others with this guy um and the guy had said that he had a girl with him i think it says uh he said he tells brienne that i saw the fool with two girls because she's only she's only thinking that the fool is traveling with one girl and then right. she's like are are there two really and he says well i never actually saw them but he wanted passage for three people um so i'm not exactly sure how he even lands on it being girls i'm thinking maybe he just says that because she says it but um and then, uh, yeah, the thing about telling him to the telling him that there's a place you, for smugglers are there, and then he keeps asking for like more and more money. As I got so <laughs> sick of him, I swear to God. And she keeps uh, paying it, and I just wanted her to be like, "Nah, girl, get up and leave." I mean, we but don't even know if she's she telling the fucking info, truth. I guess right? exactly. You fooled a fool. How do I know you're not fooling me? Right. But finally, he's like, okay, I know where they're going. I sent them to some place called Crack Claw Point. And then he tells something about uh, the place there called The Whispers, which was just like really fucking weird. Right? Uh, this place is um, back many, I guess a long time ago, there was a man who married a woods witch and every time he killed a man, he'd bring the head back home and his wife would like reanimate just the head. And then the heads could talk and give counsel. But also they never shut up because since they're just heads, all they can do all day is talk. So that's all they fucking do. Relatable. <laughs> and that's how they get like the name, the whispers. <laughs> <laughs> so she gives him, he asks for more money and says that he'll take them there. Um, and she agrees that she'll pay him if they find the sisters so much money. If they only find the fool, he'll get less money. And if they don't find anything, then they'll get no money. And, um, yeah, so that's her going to be off on her next adventure. She's going to be traveling with this guy, Nimble Dick, who I think is just not worth anything. I can't imagine that whatever intel he has has anything to do with what we know for a fact doesn't have to do with Sansa because we know where Sansa is and we also know where Arya is. So I don't know I don't know who he fooled and who's traveling with him. And I don't know if it's going to even pan out to be anybody we know, or is this just going to be, please forgive me for yet another reference, a wild goose chase. Like, <laughs> like, I, like I don't know. Like, I really don't know if this is just taking us on a, on a, a side quest that, that doesn't end up anywhere, or if this will fold into another story you know what i mean and it turns mm-hmm, out that mm-hmm. there are th- this, this fool that he fooled is actually somebody i know i just most <laughs> of the sorry. people the i care about <laughs> thing has got me for some reason <laughs> I, uh, I didn't want to go i didn't want to do it but i just couldn't think of another expression it's right there yeah i don't blame you um 
So yeah, so that's what I'm curious about. Like uh, whoever it is that he fooled, um, if they do in fact catch up to them, who will it turn out to be? Most of the people I know, well, you know what? I was going to say most of the people I know are accounted for, um, but that's really not true. Like some of the big names are accounted for, but there's a lot of people I haven't seen yet this book. And there's a mm-hmm. lot of characters in this universe, most of which come into my mind and then leave immediately. So yep. it could be somebody that I met and knew very well two books ago and then have just not thought about in ages. And then they just fucking exactly. pop up and end up being the fool that he fooled. So I'm a little like into it. You know, I'm curious. I don't, I don't think, I don't think that this quest ends up with just like randos. I think it ends up being somebody I met before. Not anybody that's going to help her find Sansa, but I think it will be somebody we know that we've met. I just don't, I don't know who it could be. It could be anybody, you know, it could be like, we met so many different traveling pockets of people. What between like the fucking brothers without banners and the outlaws and their companions, you know what I mean? It could be Mm -hmm, anybody mm -hmm. from any of the, any of those groups. Um, So we'll see, but like, I'm into it. I'm into it. And shit. All right. Samwell's chapter. Thank yeah. God there's not a lot to like deep, deep down dig into. But it's Yeah, but it's, Samwell's chapter is a lot of suffering in yeah. this these horrific conditions yeah, on this book. Yeah. Um again, like I said, yeah, guys, just those listening, Rashawn has an appointment to make. So that is yeah. why she's looking at the clock and getting a little sorry about things. Sorry, guys. <laughs> but um, we I are just, like it's an hour and a half in and we are only we, just getting right? the chapter. So yeah, so, it's, there's some, reason sometimes. to be concerned. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and it's so weird because I, like, normally I just don't, I'm not mindful of the time whatsoever. So when I have to be mindful of it, I'm, like, hyper aware of it, which is, mm-hmm. like, like not the not the best way to podcast. I apologize, guys. But, that, like, there's no in-between. <laughs> yep. I get it. Um, <laughs> but, so, yeah, we've talked about, like, the key points in this, really. There's mm-hmm, only mm-hmm. one thing that I really wanted to talk about. Because it breaks me every single time, which is Maester Eamon falling asleep and waking up and saying, Egg, I had a dream that I was old. Now, tell me again, and I apologize, you got Duncan Egg, right? That's a mm-hmm. thing that exists in this universe that y'all talk about that I don't know anything about because it is, I guess, ancillary material. Correct. So uh, I know Sir you Duncan told me the before. Tall is the one that has the same sigil as the one in Brienne's father's armory. So okay. there's a lot of theorizing that Brienne is related to him, and that's part of where her height comes from, like genetically, okay. is All from right. Sir Duncan. And Egg was the nickname of Aegon. Ah, yes. Okay, that makes sense. Oh yeah. wow. Oh, wow. Okay. And I know you've told me that before, but I got to make sure it sticks. Egg. Okay. So he's dreaming of his brother. That's who he's talking mm-hmm. to. That's who, so he wakes up and he thinks oh. he's with his brother and that he's young. Oh. Egg, I had a dream that I was old. And every time, you guys, every time. Oh. That's one of the that, most heartbreaking lines for me. That hits so much harder when I understand who he thinks he's talking to. Oh, yeah. you guys. Getting old is for the fucking birds, you guys. It sucks. It's such a dumb thing. It's, that we, that we it's like the only worst thing is the alternative, I guess. It, but... Honestly. Like, this is why. Why is this the design? It just is. Yep. Ugh. Um, I also like, too, Sam has a memory of being taught how to swim by his father by being just thrown in the water. And the yep. person that saves him is Heil. Who we just oh my met. god I didn't even fucking put that together <laughs> right? so I was yep. just like oh shit check it out wow okay all right George <laughs> I didn't um, even notice that thank you for pointing that out <laughs> although I'm, I'm, but, I bet that that's in Austin's info corner <laughs> which I have to go and look at right now um, but yeah that's a, and it's just like another bit of of well people are uh, you know they contain multitudes and is he a absolute shitbag who bullies a fucking innocent girl and is ready to like rape her for money uh, yes is he also somebody who like saved this poor kid from drowning because his father didn't give a fuck also yes 
It's too much. Mm-hmm. Too much within one person. I don't like it. <laughs> Please be one or the yeah. other. It's being all complicated. How dare? Mm-hmm. How dare? <laughs> um, I also want to mention too that there's a lot of talk, uh, or a lot of thought rather, or actually talk too, because uh, Gilly is having such a hard time that people are just kind of sick of her, and there's a lot yeah. of Sam defending her, trying to explain to people that this is really hard for her. You have to understand where she came from and how she had never even seen a real body of water until me and her were traveling together through the forest, you know? And coming across a lake or something or a river was was shocking to her. And now we're on the fucking open sea. Like, try to imagine what that is like for her. Um, And I appreciate Sam just always being willing to, like, defend her. And there are lots of hints throughout the chapter of how fussy the kid is and how unusual that is that uh, it, she's having a hard time nursing him. The kid is not doing well. Um, mm-hmm. And is, we know from when she was at the wall that she wasn't really having these type of problems. And so it really, I felt like when we got to the reveal, I was just like, because she had been the nurse of this child when she was still at the watch as well. Mm-hmm. But they, they, there's been a change and I was when yeah. the reveal happens I was like oh yeah fuck like yeah I should have mm-hmm. kind of seen that but then also I was like why would I see that though like why would I yeah would I like you are on that? a boat when you haven't been you know a baby could just, just not like it like exactly like like Sam is stirring up every five minutes too so why is it surprising that the kid is having a hard time um yeah uh this, uh, I like to, I want to mention that there's like, as they're traveling, they start out and it's sort of like smooth sailing. And then they get to this one particular part called the Skags. And we get like a little bit of talk about this, these people who were, I guess, native to this area and what mm-hmm. happened to them. Uh, where is it? They, uh, they were rumored to be like cannibals. And yeah. finally there was like a rebellion or something. And uh, Sam had read about the great shaggy unicorns. Uh, Skagos meant stone in the old tongue. The Skagosi named themselves after the stone born. Uh, Skagos had risen in rebellion. Their revolt had taken years to quell and claim the lives of the Lord of Winterfell and hundred of his swords. Some of the songs said they were cannibals. Supposedly they ate the hearts and livers of the men they killed. In the ancient days, they had sailed to the nearby island of Skane, seized its women, slaughtered its men, and ate them on a pebbled beach in a feast that lasted for a fortnight. And Skane remained unpeopled to this day. It's got some real Viking energy, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, something. It's, I feel like Viking uh, Vikings would take issue with the implication true, that they were just true. out here not, eating people. Not, but, not, you know. the, not that the Vikings were cannibals or nothing, but just like going up <laughs> into places and changing the whole makeup of the place because they, they rode through town. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. It's uh, it's kind of like they're wildlings somehow, mm-hmm, but mm-hmm. you know, they, but they live here. Yeah. And uh, everybody and, has just sort of agreed, well, we can't manage those guys, so I guess let them do what they do like, on that weird <laughs> island, and let's all just avoid it. <laughs> I guess that's a good compromise. I don't right. know. Um, so, yeah, so then, they, so then they start getting into worse and worse weather. Um, you have the part about uh, Eamon being outside, and Sam uh, has to eventually carry him downstairs because the weather has gotten so bad but he won't leave Mm -hmm. and he's so tiny Eamon is so tiny and frail at this point that even though he's in all these blankets and robes and furs and he's soaking wet so he weighs twice as much as he normally would he's still so light that Sam can carry him with ease yeah Uh, which is just a really stark reminder of just how like old he is and this idea that he's going to retire in old town and you start thinking like is he even gonna make it i guess he's yeah. gonna make it to old town now i'm not really sure i don't know if he survives this voyage i'm really worried about him um it's um 
Sorry, I was just going to mention there's a video game that I'm playing right now called Spirit Fairer on the Switch for those who are interested. It is a really great game. But the premise of it is that you are now the new person who has to usher spirits into the uh, afterlife. And so you have a boat and you go and pick up spirits and get them to come with you and they have to like sort of cope with some shit that they're dealing with before they come to terms with the fact that they are dead and agree to cross over and there is a spirit right now and they all take the the form of an animal once they're aboard the ship so you've got a variety of different animals on there but this one is this little hedgehog lady whose name is alice i think and she is so precious and she has reached a point now where she does not recognize me as a character and is thinking that I am her daughter or just asking where her daughter is. Uh, I had to move her residence to the like first floor because she can't get down the steps anymore. This is a and game you play for fun. It's like beautiful and so sweet and heartwarming, but also like devastating. Ugh. And I cannot tell you like, uh, this game is truly it's so simple and the music is so outstanding and the sound design and everything i love it like i'm hooked on it it's like a an animal crossing that went like deeper you know mm. but god the the progression of watching this little creature slowly like decline is so rough and like i wasn't around for seeing that with my grandmother until I would go back and visit and she was already like in the nursing home and stuff. I missed a lot of like the developments as they happened, mm. but um, it's so difficult. And those of you who like have gone through this or are going through this, you got my thoughts with you because it's like a fucking game I'm playing and it's so rough. Yeah. Uh, I mean, well, it's you just know, a lot. You, it's not that you don't have any, like, you know, you've, you know, you, you have some personal experience with it. Uh, even now so I'm not surprised mm -hmm. that this is hitting you in the way that that is you know when you think about you know some of your family uh, I don't I can't believe you're putting yourself to that it's it's beautiful though like it is yeah. it's it's like life affirming you know how things can be like that I do yeah that's what I say about it's all like, the really depressing stuff that I watch People yeah. are like, why do you love that show and yeah yeah I get it I get it so highly recommend it if you are prepared to cope with some of that and also just play some fun like mini games and uh, and listen to the calm sound of the ocean and seagulls with some nice little music. It's just really like yeah. chill. But anyway, yeah, yeah this whole you know thing what? with Eamon is tough. Uh, you would think with my very strong feelings about geese that I would have equally strong feelings about seagulls, but I don't. I wouldn't think right. that. Seagulls are an entirely different situation. Right. I know people People seem to really hate them, and I guess they can be aggressive when it comes to food, but I guess maybe I just don't spend enough time at the beach to have any really strong feelings about them. They can be but, so uh, aggressive. There was, there was a place <laughs> I would go for uh, for fried clams with my mom, and they you would have to, like, sit like you were in prison with your arms around your food, like you're, you know, <laughs> lean forward, I, like yes, hunched I, over your the plate. Over, yep, yep. Yep. Because they would fucking come down and just be like, you clearly didn't want it. I, like, it was Ooh, right there. I took it because you didn't want it. Like, Lobster rolls. How nice of you. Yoink. Exactly. <laughs> I kind of see seagulls like I see raccoons. Like I have a mild admiration for them because they just <laughs> fucking do not have any qualms about taking exactly what the fuck they feel like. And they don't care if it's like in the dead of night going through the garbage or if they just sit there and let you feed them either way they're just as long as food's involved preferably fried we're being I feel we're happy like about you, it you have a deep appreciation for animals that are like especially like food motivated you're exactly just, you're just exactly. like yeah i get it i get it it's something <laughs> i fucking understand man we speak the same language you know i feel like it's a there's a heart song in there somehow <laughs> I understand. Um, so. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry, everybody. Um, so, uh, so things on the ship have just gotten really, really bad because of this bad weather and how sick everybody feels. This one guy, this Darion, who's the singer, who had been sort of like lighthearted 
at the beginning of this chapter. By the time we get to the end of this chapter, he is basically drunk all the time because everybody's yeah. been drinking like this, this fire wine. He is sick of the noise and the baby crying and Gilly crying. And, you know, and he's just becoming like really kind of ugly and hateful, you know, mm-hmm. at one point he just screams at, uh, Sam that, uh, you know, it doesn't matter. What does any of this matter? Um, and Sam is at one just the point, just like I hate this, I hate this, I hate the sea, I hate this, I hate this, because they're also he's also terrified of being mm-hmm. on the ship that has not changed for him. Um, and it is at this point when everybody has just had too much, you know, too much <laughs> of everything that Sam ends up, I think, overhearing some of the guys who are oaring talking about Gilly and blaming yeah, her for the bad, bad luck, luck that they're having. And she is bad luck because she fucked her own father, they say. And that's worse than whoring. It's worse than anything you can do. And they're all going to drown unless they get rid of her and that abomination. Sam does not confront them because they're older and tougher and he doesn't think he can beat them, which he most certainly could not. But he mm-hmm. has decided he's always going to be with her and he's always going to have his knife ready. So he's going to be her protector whenever she needs to like go use the bathroom or leave the cabin for any reason. Yeah. And then, um, you know, again, this Darian guy, Sam is just like, can you just play one lullaby? And he's just like, no, fuck them. You know? <laughs> yeah. Uh, he starts to then, he's so desperate. He asks Amen finally, isn't there something you can give her, right? Because she's sobbing all the time. Sam hasn't slept. Mm-hmm. Nobody's eating. And because he still thinks that it's just like seasickness mm-hmm. or yeah. Yep. Yeah. Can you give her something? It. You know, so she won't. He also says, "Can you give her something so she won't be so afraid?" Which is like even more than seasickness. It's like you have a volume or something, dude. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. And Amon says to him in a super like casual, matter of fact way. It's not fear that you're hearing. That's grief. And there's no potion for that. You got to let the tears run their course. And Sandra's like, scared of what? She's finally going to a safe place. This is going to be the safest and warmest and most comfortable that she's been ever in her life. Why would she be grieving? And Amon says, Sam, with a whisper, You have two good eyes and yet you don't see. She is a mother grieving for her child. And that's really when I was like, whoa, wait a fucking minute here. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. And Sam is also like, wait a minute. Because he immediately is like, no, she's just seasick. We're all, it's, it's, that's all it is. Once we get to Bravos, it's going to be fine. And Eamon interrupts kind of the trail of thought and says, yeah, and the babe will still be Dallas' son and not the child of her body. And Sam and me both just our jaws hit the floor. And it took us a minute to process. (laughs) A minute to process. Indeed. And Sam is really struggling. Because the first thing he says is she wouldn't. She would never have left the wall without her son. She loves him. And then Eamon, yeah, he breaks it down for all of us. You know, that, yes, she loved both of those children. And, you know, every mother loves all her children, but not the same. Uh, And that I'm certain she didn't just leave her son willingly. Like, she was, pressure was put on her. And he says... I what threats the Lord Commander made, what promises I can only guess, but threats and promises there surely were. And then the betrayal is you know, John, I'm sorry, Sam is just like John would never fucking do that. Yeah. To which Ammon replies, John would never, Lord Snow did. Sometimes there's no happy choice, only one less grievous than the others. And yeah. Then Sam is spinning. Yep. Uh, yep. Trying to He's bugging. Fucking, he really is. Like, he is thinking of everything they went through. Everything him and Gilly went through. Crasters, Mormont dying, 
being out in the elements, the snow, the ice, the freezing wind, the fucking whites, cold hands, like everything, the wall forever and ever and ever, the black gate that they went through. Like, what was the fucking point? No happy choices and no happy endings. And he is just like, his head is just on fire. And he can't, and he's thinking, okay, John switched the babes. He switched the babes to protect the little prince to keep him away from Lady Melisandre and from her red god. If she burns Gilly's boy, who will care? No one but no one but Gilly. He was only Craster's whelp, an abomination born of incest, not the son of the king beyond the wall. He's no good for a hostage, no good for a sacrifice, no good for anything. He doesn't even have a name. And y'all, this is just the fucking worst. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't yeah, like Yeah, this sucks. And he just, like, what is he to do? There is nothing he can do. They're in the middle of the fucking sea on a boat rocking its way towards fucking the Citadel and Old Town. And all he can think, Sam says at one point to himself, um, that ought to be my star looking up at the Red Wanderer in the sky. Uh, that ought to be my star, Sam thought miserably. I helped make John Lord Commander, and I brought him Gilly and the babe. There are no happy endings. <laughs> and then this Poor fucking Sam. Darian guy shows up right at this moment, having no idea what Sam is going through. And he says, oh, it's a nice night for once. Look, the stars are out. It might be the worst is done. And Sam says, no. The worst isn't done. The worst is just beginning and there are no happy endings. And he looks at Sam and says, you are such a craven. Which, dude, fuck you. Yeah, he sucks. Fuck you. You, you, mm. you couldn't even deal with the, the fucking adversity of, a, of this choppy fucking voyage without being yep. like reducing yourself to a drunken fucking piece of shit. It was the only way you could cope through it. And you are fucking calling Sam Craven. You have no idea. Just fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, mm -hmm. fuck you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amen, sister. Yep, 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 yep. Yeah, that guy sucks. Mm, yeah. He's just, and he sucks in such a, like, very, like, ordinary sort of. Super ordinary. Unimpressive like way, a, you know? He's not like a villain or anything. He's just a fucking dude, you know? Yep. It's just a fucking another dude walking around. Duding it up. <laughs> <laughs> all over the fucking place <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah. you know what the, yeah. sometimes th those are like you know we get, we get caught in the trap of thinking that like you know uh what is it that if you're not operating at like the height of villainy then you're not like able to do harm you know, yes, but there is yeah. so much just very casual harm we inflict on each other throughout the course of our days, you know, oh just yeah, because because we don't think before we fucking speak, we mm -hmm. you know we say whatever dumb fucking thing pops into our head, you know, we don't have the common fucking sense to keep it to ourselves, we just blurt every fucking thing out with no consideration of who we're speaking to. Or whether we know what the fuck we're talking about. Just, you know, the ways yeah. that we hurt each other without even realizing what we're doing because we're careless, you know? Yeah. It, uh, it is just a really great example of one of those moments, you know? Also, the idea of, like, in, you know, intent doesn't trump impact, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, like, even if you had called this guy out in this moment, he would have been like, oh, well, I didn't mean any harm. You know, I had no idea mm -hmm. Sam was going such a hard, hard thing right at this particular moment. If I had known he was having a hard time in this moment, I wouldn't have said the thing. Instead of being like, maybe you just shouldn't have fucking said the thing, period. Yeah. Like, yep. That's, that's the lesson the here. Don't say the thing. Not that, oh, I didn't know he was going through a hard time or I wouldn't have said it. How about you just don't fucking say it? Mm-hmm. But. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yep. Did, is there yeah. anything in uh, I, I, Austin's corner? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
No, I, I was just going to say the one thing that I had meant to say that I had forgot to mention when we were in Brienne's chapter two is just like the phenomenon of being bullied to the point that people being nice to you causes suspicion is something that is a real familiar feeling to a lot of mm -hmm. folks out there. Absolutely. And I got to a point where it was no longer something that I needed to worry about so much. And I still worried. It was embedded so deep because of the way that I was bullied. And I didn't even experience bullying too badly. And I still was on the receiving end of it enough yes. in that yeah. respect that I was like, you know, always paranoid. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are people out there like that were targets in a way that I never was. And I can't imagine the lasting impact that has on yeah. your psyche and your yeah. lack of trust in people and lack of belief in yourself and that you deserve anything good or that good things will happen to you because of course mm -hmm, they don't mm -hmm. because they never have. And anytime exactly. they, you thought they were, it was a fucking joke. Like, exactly. Yeah. I, um, didn't experience like prolonged bullying. Uh, one, because I moved around so much that I'd never had like one particular tormentor that like I had to suffer through like years and years. You know what I mean? Like some people mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. like a person because they never move and they like meet a, they get a bully in grade school and they have to like go all the way to senior year with that fucking bully. You know, yeah. I never had that experience, but I definitely like got picked on at various times. And I, was definitely a late bloomer as far as being a teenager and being considered attractive. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. So I was, I would get that thing where like guys would be like, yeah, my friend wants your number. And then the guy would go, "Ew, no, I don't. And then they would all laugh, mm -hmm. you know, like that mm -hmm. kind of thing happened to me when I was a teenager. Um, you know, that sort of experience. Um, I don't really, it wasn't bad enough to be as extreme as like people actually going out of their way with a plan to like humiliate me, you know, thank God I didn't, I never had like that kind of energy behind it, you know, yeah. but that sort of casual, like how can I make a stranger feel like shit just because I feel like doing it definitely had that. Definitely. And in Sam's chapter, we get him like going to visit some lord and he doesn't know at the time, but this was like an audition for him to right. serve as a cupbearer. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. he like humiliated his father because he was so weak and craven right, and whatever. Right. And the guy's sons like bullied him mercilessly. And at one point had a kitchen girl dress up in armor and come out and beat the shit That's out of him with a right. sword. Yep. yep and yeah, I'm glad herself. you mentioned that. My God, I forgot yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's, uh, yeah, this is terrible. No wonder I didn't want to talk about it. This was awful. Like, yeah, the, there's a lot to do with like bullying in these chapters. Both yeah, of them. The, the extent to which, and you know, it's funny. I mean, it's not surprising. It's not even funny. But the, the source of the reason why both Sam and Brienne are targets is because neither of them are performing their gender, quite frankly, in the ways yep. in which society expects. You know, 100%. Sam is not performing masculinity the way he's supposed to. Brienne not performing femininity the way she's supposed to. It's really, I, I'm glad that these two chapters are back to back because they are kind of mirrors, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Of and, and like we open the episode talking about Brienne and what it's like to just be innately different and how no matter what you do, that difference can't be camouflaged. But that, yeah. that, that checks, that tracks for Sam too, you know, mm -hmm. no matter how hard Sam may have wanted to be what his father valued and perform that that's just not who he is and like I said at the beginning of the chapter it it doesn't matter if you hide it because even children can see it children know it even when you're little you know mm -hmm, like you mm -hmm. people who are uh different in any way especially if you want to talk about like queer as a child mm -hmm. other little kids can pick up on it even before you yourself are like, Oh, I'm queer. You know, you don't, you know, the little kid be like, mm -hmm. something's different. That kid's different. And that yep. marks them for ridicule because as a species, we are incredibly unevolved. <laughs> One would say. Yeah. There was a TikTok that somebody shared today. And I think the username was at head on fire pod which is not a podcast that i have heard of so i'm not sure that's right but i haven't heard of most podcasts i'll be honest um 
but he was talking about people saying the, like just let kids be kids. Is this the blonde guy? He's got blonde hair. He's yeah. talking into a mic. He's. I watched that this morning mm-hmm. too. I know exactly yep. what you're talking about. And uh, for those interested, you can definitely go and find it. But he's talking about like the phenomenon of straight people or allegedly straight people who say like, I don't, you know, I have nothing against gay people, but I just, uh, I think we should just let kids be kids and not let stuff be marketed toward them. And he tells a story about the absolutely horrific bullying that he was subjected to before, long before he was even aware he was Mm -hmm. gay and Mm -hmm. that he didn't like bring that upon himself. He just was who he was. And Mm -hmm. it was enough that kids were, taught that there was something wrong with being different at all and he's like i was just a kid trying to be a kid and you guys were fine with letting me suffer what i suffered even though Mm -hmm. i was just a kid trying to be a kid because i didn't fit in the you know and he's like i wasn't being targeted with advertising or media that Mm -hmm. had gay representation at all that wasn't how i grew up i was just different and that was Mm -hmm. it and it was enough for my life to be fucking hell and i had plans to end it until i was working at a job with a lesbian woman who just existed and was open and it was enough to give me hope that maybe there is a place that i belong eventually if i can just get there and and that stories like that you know stories like that show how absolute utter bullshit the 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 fake concern about protecting all children is because you're not really interested in protecting all of the children are you no you're not you're only interested in protecting protecting the children that you think deserve protection which are the children that conform to whatever ideals you have about what it is to be like a good person that deserves protection and anybody Mm -hmm. who doesn't it's everything comes back to the in and the out group you know, that that yeah. idea of the people in the group are special and don't need to be governed by like the, all the laws we're putting out there. Those are for the people in the out group, you know, and if they would just conform, then they wouldn't have to worry about being oppressed and, and like legislated and, and brutalized, you know, mm-hmm. it's such mm-hmm. fucking bullshit. And, and because they would let and encourage their children and they do everywhere all day raise their children to be little bullies and send them out into the world and teach them how like you know to to spot the differences and then reward their behavior he ended up telling a really horrifying story in that that live or with tiktok or whatever about yeah definitely trigger warning for real bad bullying yeah i'm not i'm I'm not yeah i'm not yeah i'm not gonna go into detail but but when you think about his story and and these children and the age they were at the time that they did that to him, like, yeah. But people yep. will hide behind their yeah. People will hide mm-hmm. behind their children and use it as cover for all kinds of all kinds of things. But yeah, I really like these two chapters being back to back together because Sam and Brienne have so much in common. Um, though I don't know if they would think that if they ever met, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Definitely. Although but, I do um, think just by virtue of who his dad was, she would be sympathetic towards Sam. Yeah. Just be like, oh, I, God, oh, sweetie, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I think it's really telling, too, that when she's – the entire time she's thinking about her experience with Tarly, both times, there is – like no there's no mention of sam. of sam yeah and i imagine yeah. that by the time they're at renly's host sam is already on his way to the wall so that would explain why she doesn't like know him but i feel like i may have misread but there's something about did she know tarly before she she went to high that's when she first met him was at high garden when she was with renly right i think so Right. Yeah, I so, think so I, though, but don't my, me. So my assumption is that Sam, even though Sam is already at the wall, she seems to know a fair amount about Dickon, who I am imagining was home. He wasn't traveling with the host, right? So that means Lord Harley is talking about his family and talking about his son Dickon and never says a word about his son Sam. Yep. Yep. 
Sam has is as good as dead or mm -hmm. even worse. Never has mm -hmm. existed, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. I gotta imagine his wife has a bad time of it too. Because listen, his wife There is no be... way he didn't blame her for his son. Absolutely. Being the way he is, you know. Mm-hmm. And to this day, there's a there's a, a flashback. Sam is thinking about I forget exactly what moment it is, but his mother is sort of like wiping his cheek. He's crying, and she keeps saying, "Poor Sam, poor Sam, poor Sam." I can't remember mm -hmm. what moment it happens, but she's comforting him probably for something his fucking father did. So, so you know, Randall is always talking about how she coddles the boy, and it's your fault he's soft, and you know that whole yeah. thing. Um, yeah. Men are just y'all. Sometimes, mm -hmm. I just don't know. I just don't know about y'all. Sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, I don't know. I know this. This is fiction. You know what I mean, but, uh, but yeah, I just, I, it's I, I fiction I based on real standards, though. You know, that we have I, held. I worry about y'all. I do. Mm -hmm. But. uh all right but yeah two um, really really yeah. good chapters i enjoyed both of them a lot i really did there wasn't a tremendous amount of air quotes moving the plot forward if you will mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but i did i didn't i didn't mind it at all i i really enjoyed both of these chapters and i of course some I of like my favorite chapters are the ones where not very much happens yeah. you know it depends yeah. yeah i definitely did not sometimes when you get chapters like this you i i anyway will sometimes have a sort of anxiousness about it. Like, all right, let's, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Mm -hmm. But I didn't feel that with either of these really. I thought they, they were both uh, really gave me a lot of like backstory for two characters that I already felt like I knew well, but mm -hmm. ended up coming out of these feeling like I know them even better. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that reveal about what John did with the, with the babies and the swap to, you know, was just really well done. I just felt everything the same was feeling. All right. Well, guys, uh, I don't have any new patrons to greet this week, which is just so sad. So mm. if you're interested in becoming a patron, and if you're not totally sure, I have enabled free trials for five and $10 patrons. So if you're interested in like just checking it out, seeing what it's all about, you can go and become a free uh, member for seven days and get access to some of the content and just take a look around and see if it's for you. And uh, I really hope that you give it a shot and see what we're talking about because there is so much, so much, there's so much mm. guys. Um, and some of you may listen on uh youtube and just fyi youtube mistakenly thought that i was just reading these books aloud as audiobooks and took my whole channel down so i have filed a an appeal and we will see how that happens but if you are listening to this you probably don't listen on youtube so i don't know why i'm telling you here because yeah. you wouldn't hear this anyway um, but i just wanted to give you guys a heads up about that which is very frustrating because i've been planning to move from crowdcast to youtube and now it's just kind of but we'll see how that works out um, and I also just real quick wanted to mention that me and Miles had been recording the Suki episodes on Mondays at 5 p.m. Central Standard, but now we are going to be moving to Fridays at noon Central Standard Time because of a job change for Miles. So, uh, those of you who have been coming to those, just letting you know, and those of you who had wanted to, and the time didn't work for you, maybe this time works better. Um, all right, everybody. Thank you guys all so much for listening. We really love you very much. Hope that you're enjoying the episodes. And until next time, toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys. Joffrey. Cersei. Walter Frey. Meryn Chan. Tywin Lannister. Spoiled Network Podcast.